What's up everybody, this is Jake from Rev6. Welcome to our new YouTube channel. If you own a side-by-side -side ATV, you like fixing them up, then this may be your next favorite YouTube channel. Today I wanna to talk about our Rev6 upgraded cam chain tensioner. This is a ratcheting style tensioner. Um, it's used for the OEM style hydraulics. Some of you know, um, a lot of Polaris motors and engines, they come with a hydraulic tensioner. Um, these hydraulic tensioners, until this motor builds oil pressure, there's tension, there's not enough tension on this chain. I mean, I can, I can physically squeeze this cam chain. Um, until this motor builds oil pressure, you risk skipping teeth on your, on your, on your cams. Um, when that happens, then you have your valves, they come in contact with the piston. Uh, you, you end up having to rebuild the whole top end. Um, some of you guys have already been down this path. That's why you may be looking at this video. Um, and that's why you may be looking for an install video. When you receive one of our Rev6 tensioners, what you're gonna receive in the box, you're gonna have your mechanical ratcheting style tensioner. I'll show you how that works in just a little bit. You're gonna have the two bolt flange gasket. You also have the aluminum uh, billet adapter. Um, this one's anodized black. Um, you will have a, a spacer um, or dowel pin as they call it, um, a crush washer, your two 10 millimeter bolts, your O-ring and your 10 millimeter plug for the end. We will post a, uh, post a link and give you a list of all the tools um, that we use, um, whether you're building an engine from scratch, whether you're gonna be doing it in the machine, um, it's all pretty much the same uh, process. So some of the tools you're gonna need for the job, uh, you're gonna need some contact cleaner, some brake cleaner, um, or even carb cleaner. Um, we use brake cleaner because we have it on hand here at the shop. You're gonna need some assembly lube, um, we use this stuff because it's readily available here. Um, any assembly lube um, or even just waterproof grease will, will work, just small amounts. Um, you're going to need my patent pending priming tool, flat blade screwdriver, 10 millimeter open end wrench, needle nose pliers. Now you can either go with a inch and 1 16th wrench. Most not, you know, not everybody has one of those in the shop or at home when they're trying to do this upgrade. So a crescent wrench will work. Um, a flat blade screwdriver. Um, I use this one in particular to rotate the motor with no flywheel. Uh, if your flywheel is installed or your clutch is installed, don't worry, you don't need that. That is an optional thing. Same with this as well. So I'll show you how it works. Um, you can take a pair of needle nose pliers here and it ratchets out automatically. Um, when it ratchets out, I can't push it back in. So when the engine's doing, uh, when it's when it's running, um, anytime there's any stretch or slack that happens in the chain, this is going to ratchet out and it's going to keep that from happening. Um, it's a really neat design um, and definitely a, a must-have on, especially if you're a weekend warrior. If you know, if you just want something that's safe and reliable when you're out with your family, you know, we we understand that. So when I go to install one of these, let's say let albeit whether it's, uh, you know, you're doing a fresh top end, uh, bottom end, top end rebuild, or if it's in the machine, one of the very first things you have to do, this is actually a Sportsman 570. Um, if you own a Ranger 570, um, the install is gonna be identical, um, a little more difficult in the ATV than it is the side-by-side. -side. One of the first things I like to do though, is now if you have the flywheel off, you know, the book tells you to go to your uh, crank position hole, uh, rotate the engine over. When you find top dead center, you'll see a little mark through the window and it, that's it's gonna have a little V there that's gonna tell you top dead center. Um, the problem with that actually sometimes is the flywheel may shear. Now, that can be an issue when it's in the machine. If, you're, if you've got the motor like I do here, it's nice and clean, you're, you're doing the build, this is actually rather easy. Um, Instead of going through all that motion, the very first thing I do is I rotate this motor over and I just, this is what I call my timing tool. Um, it touches the top of the piston. Um, there's no metal, no nothing that can flake or damage it. Um, and I rotate the motor over. And as you're rotating the motor over, you'll see, when you get these, the I and the E's lined up on your cam marks, you're at top dead center on a 570. On a five, it's a little different for a nine and thousand. On a five seventy, you can use this 
to find your, your highest point. If, if you're able to take off the valve covers, just three T40 Torx bolts, um, very easy to take off. Take that off and then you'll be able to see your marks are lined up. With the marks lined up, what we're gonna do, now you can use a variety of things. You can use, it's an inch and 16th, uh, inch and 16th socket wrench. Um, not everybody's got those unique sockets like here or a wrench. Um, but everybody has a crescent wrench. It does make it a little difficult, but it is also very easy. I like using the crescent wrench because this valve or this body, this aluminum body is very soft. Um, so you don't need to torque it down like you need to torque down these. So basically, let's get that unthreaded. I almost forgot my gloves, so we're back. So. You know, this one already had, of course, this is the stock. Um, so now that you can see, I can easily, I mean, I don't even know if the mic can pick that up, but you can hear it plunging. Um, that's for when it builds oil pressure. Now to kind of give you guys a, a quick close up, if you look at top dead center, right here, you can put tension on that. Everything else is right here, so you don't have to worry too much about this thing jumping timing. It's a very easy, straightforward install. So there's there's a few different ways you can actually install this thing. Um, on our on our reman engine side, um, we actually will do one at a time. Um, reason being, it's just a step by step process, just like you know, anytime you build an engine. Now, when it comes to being installed, you know, and installing the machine. Um, Wrenches get thrown, you know, cuss words get sit, spoken. It's, uh, it can be frustrating. Um, frame rails get in the way, just kind of depends. Um, so one of the other ways you can actually install it is, well, first, we're gonna have to retract this. So don't worry, once it's retracted, you can retract it in. One of the ways is you wanna apply pressure here. And basically where these two, the flange is at, you just wanna hold tight, take your flat blade screwdriver, you just want to turn in clockwise. And what it'll do is it'll retract that back into place. You take your little set pin here. There's a little groove. So what you want to do, you want to wait. Boom. So it lines up and you're good to go. So once you get it seated back in there, you'll hold it in place for your install. Now for the assembly, doesn't matter which way it goes. Take your two 10 millimeter bolts. Now what's nice about these bolts is you have, like I said earlier, you got a Phillips in, but we're not over tightening. So you can actually just use them just to speed up the process. Just want to make sure you're tightening down nice and even. And you want to just go ahead and take your 10 millimeter, just give them a few snugs evenly. And we'll come back and finish tightening that up. So now what you want to do uh, you can use regular assembly grease, whatever, and what we're doing. So we talked about that lip earlier. That's designed for the inside of this ring right here to sit inside of. So what I like to do, give a little dab, a little dab, and a little dab. Boom, sits flush. You don't have to worry about it coming off when you're doing the install. So now, so this spacer here, it does have a beveled edge and it, it is flat on one side. The flat side does go in. The round side goes towards the tensioner. One of the things you'll wanna do, especially if 
If this is one of your, you know, if this is in a machine already, um, one of the very first things you should do is actually use contact cleaner. You can use carb cleaner. You can use just about anything. We actually like to use a brake cleaner. We get it by the gallons, so it makes it a little easier for us. So you just want to make sure you're cleaning any any of that oil. Um, it's better to do it with that old tensioner in if you've got dirt around here. You don't want dirt going down in there. Um, but just make sure it's clean. Another thing you want to do, and um, you know, aluminum is very very soft. Um, so what I actually like to do is I actually like to take my fingers. And I actually like to just check for any burrs that may be, uh, whether it be you got a, a cylinder from Millennium that's re-nickel plated, maybe you got dinged in chipping, you never know. I've seen these things, just a little tiny nick can cause these to leak. Um, they're not under that much torque. Um, so definitely um, just keep an eye on that. So. I always like to put a little dab of lube just on the end. That's just preference. A little bit of lube just right there on this thing is obviously, you know, there's oil ports here, oil ports there. So definitely all the internal components get oil. So now this is this is where it gets crucial. You just want to make sure that it's still resting on that shoulder, that it doesn't bind in any way, shape, or form. Just take it and you just want to give it a good snug. It's really all you need. If you're worried, you know, if you're worried about getting damaged here, you can always put one of these in a blue shop towel over the top. That helps. Um, some of the other guys, they like to do that even with their wrench. Um, now, once this is done, you want to take your needle nose pliers. If you're in a machine, you'll probably have to come out like this. And what I like to do Just a little bit of dab right there. That'll help hold this O-ring in place. So now we got that. You want to come back through, just give another nice little snug here. Now, if you really care about, um, you know, your torque specs and everything like that, um, these are 86 inch pounds. Um, don't over tighten it. Otherwise you can damage the threads on that, that body. You want to come through, just very, very lightly tighten that down. You want to make sure it doesn't squish anywhere. It doesn't take much. And you'll notice, you'll start seeing some of that assembly lube come squeezing out. You'll see that it's squishing nice and even all the way around, and that's what you want. And again, after the bike's running, if you get a little bit going, you just little, little baby turns, um, and it'll clear up. I always like to actually hang on to this thing in case I ever have to do a valve adjustment down the line. It makes this thing really easy. You don't have to try to fight with the flat lead screwdriver. Um, that's just me. So let's go go ahead and rotate this over a few times. Make sure we're still within time. I just heard it go again. Yep. There we go. All right. Let's bring it up top dead center. So that's top dead. Timing's dead on. And that's as easy as that. That's really it for the install on this. If you guys want to see um, the install on a 900 or a thousand or even a turbo, um, definitely comment below. Um, 
It's pretty much the same process. Top dead center is a little bit different. If you guys want to see it with a flywheel on it and with the cover on it, if you guys still aren't sure, um, one thing I can tell you is with your eyes and ease, they can both be upside down or right side up. So now you're back at right side up. Every time you're at top bed. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to check out our TikTok, our Instagram, and our Facebook. Let us know down in the comments below what you would like to see for our next video. If you have any further questions, text our Rev6 number and myself or a member of our team will respond within 10 minutes. We'll see you next time.